Let's get across the latest trends in the FX markets now, especially with the US presidential elections. Almost at the doorstop, Lachlan Meekin from Go Markets joining me now for more. A lot of volatility in bond markets. What are we seeing in FX here, Lachlan? Yeah, hi, Juliet. Well, yes, it's the US dollar strength. It's been a pretty brutal rally it's had the last month. And really, I guess a couple of reasons that American uh, exceptionalism with their, uh, their figures being quite impressive, certainly better than... Uh, the other developed economies and also that Trump trade coming into this election. We've seen yields rise pretty much in lockstep with um, you know Trump's poll numbers and that's obviously dragged the, the US dollar with it. So uh, it had a little bit of a pullback last night, but it doesn't it hasn't followed through this morning in the Asian session with the US dollar a little bit stronger again. So um, yeah, it looks like we could be seeing a stronger US dollar into this election, but we do have some very big risk um, events ahead with the PCE and, and non-farm payroll next week. Well, if they follow the narrative we've seen so far in US uh, figures of, of, of beating or being quite strong, then um, you'd expect that US dollar really to get into that election uh, next week. And then they're obviously the FOMC after that as well. So um, it's, it's, it's a, you have to be quite brave, I think, to be trading the US dollar at the moment. What about um, how you trade the Aussie dollar, especially given uh, we had that better than expected uh, jobs data coming through as well? What's the focus for the Aussie, Lachlan? Yeah, the, the Aussie's got a lot of positives going for it at the moment. You think, I mean, guess the US dollar, I think everything is likely to struggle a bit. But um, I, mean, I was looking at my Bloomberg screen this morning, the the, uh, the WERP screen, the inter interest rate predictions, and we stick out like a sore thumb. And every other central bank is fully priced in a cut at their next meeting, whereas we're sitting at about 2% chance. So um, when you see, I mean, commodities are also doing well with gold and copper and iron ore holding some gains. So um, there are a lot of positives for the Aussie. The data is, as you said, stronger than expected as well. Um, against the US, probably I wouldn't be looking at that, but I reckon um, something like against the Kiwi dollar, when you look at uh, next next month, they have um, uh, 50 basis points priced in already for a cut when we've got nothing. So that'll actually bring our, interest, our official rate above there. So. I'm liking for the Aussie dollar bulls be looking maybe at some of those cross pairs rather than against the US. And um, as a journalist, you should never make yourself part of the story. But you know what? The bosses aren't around. I'm going to. What is the <laughs> outlook for the yen as I head to Japan? I, I, I just got back from two weeks in Japan. It's absolutely amazing. You'll have a great time. Yay. But um, it's uh, yeah, we've seen it really just start tracking that differentials in the US 10 and JGB 10. Uh, yield differentials again, it's, it's as it has done for the last couple of years. But um, interestingly enough, though, we did see some comments starting to come out of the Ministry of Finance there with Kato, I think, saying um, the, the, the moves were rapid um, and one-sided. Also, Ueda from the Bodge coming out and saying something about being unstable. So it's interesting that jawboning starting again once it's gone past 150. But um, really, without some type of intervention, um, as long as these yields keep rising, the US dollar is and shows the strength, which it looks like it will be at least this election. Um, you, I, I'm, I'm guessing you'll see that drift upwards again up to that maybe 155. So good for you with the exchange rate when you're there.